All right, hello fellow coder, welcome back to our Fresh Vote series. Uh, in this lesson, I want to figure out uh, how to essentially get rid of the duplicates that we've been seeing um, in our comments. So in the, uh, what was it, comment controller? Yeah, uh, in the comment controller, we are getting um, uh, comments by feature ID. So we're getting all the comments that are put into or that been posted into a particular feature request. Uh, and uh, then when we're displaying them on the screen, uh, we're realizing there are duplicates, right? So in other words, you know, if you have comment number one that has comment number two inside of it, it'll say comment one, comment two, and then it'll say comment two, right? So we'll have a duplicate uh, comment number two there. So we need to figure out how to structure that. And, and like I was saying in the previous lesson, I, I want to see if I can do that um, based on... I want to see if I can filter out the duplicate such that it doesn't appear uh, further down. So, you know, comment number two, if it's a child of comment number one, that should never become a parent somewhere else. So in other words, as soon as we see it, that's probably an indication that it shouldn't happen again. So I thought there was a way to do that. So I basically tried to, I just wrote this, this Google statement here. Well, Ecosia statement because I'm planting trees with my searches. Uh, faster XML JSON, JSON remove duplicate objects based on ID. Uh, so let's see, I haven't looked at any of these responses yet. So um, Android? No, probably. No, that's not what I want. Deserialize JSON array that contain two objects. No, it doesn't sound right. Uh, the import, I cannot import. No. Optional property, da, 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 remove duplicate text value. So kind of, I don't want to remove duplicate text. I want to remove an entire object. Ability to skip duplicate module. I wonder if I can <laughs> complete, refa complete refactoring of type ID serialization. Ignore new fields. So I feel like I might need to change my search string or flip over to actually use Google. Sometimes Equosia doesn't deserialize that contain two objects of the same. So yeah, that's kind of sort of what I'm getting at. Oh, this is coming from GitHub. So this looks like it's an issue or whatever. Um, already had Poju. So this is kind, I think this is sort of what I'm talking about. How can I deserialize an array with two objects that contain, that contains the same sub object ID 98, ID 101, referring ID 99, ID 99. Well, that's not the situation that we are in, but let me see what they say. This is a bug. Oh. Add this. This is not a bug. <laughs> Typical developers. One says it's a bug, the other one says it's a feature. Um, ah, Jackson allows you to specify different scopes with JSON identity info. This I recognize. I recognize using JSON identity info. Yes. Yes. I believe this is what I had used. Um, Okay. Scope, owner scope, user scope. What is owner scope dot class? Class used for scope has no semantic meaning. It's it's simply just some value, and by default, it defaults the type of the thing being referenced. Okay, but so does that mean it doesn't need to be created? Okay, so let me look up JSON identity identity info. Oops, JSON identity info example. Yes, exactly. How to use JSON. So no, we're, on, we're definitely on the right track. Um, it seems Jackson, whatever has a subset of Jackson features must not have made the cut. If you can use a full uh, library, just use standard object mapper with. So yeah, I remember doing it on the whole class. Right. Yes. Okay. I think this is what I did. 
It's all coming back to me now. So for the uh, for all of the uh, child objects that we're talking about, uh, so on the comment itself, we should have a JSON identity info, Control Shift O to, to import everything, and then on the user we should have it. On feature we should have it. I think if I remember correctly, I had this on pretty much all of my entities um, that are being. Uh, you know, serialized and sent into uh, uh, JSON format. Uh, I believe this is this is what what I did to make it work. Uh, oops, let me run it in debug mode. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So let's have a look and see. So in our front end, uh, we're yeah we're gonna put the comment text fine. So basically, if things work properly, um, let me. What was my Select star from comment. What was my structure here? So they're all in feature ID one. Two of the comments are nested ones. So essentially, if all if everything goes well, we should only see. Uh, technically, we should only see test comment and test comment number four. Technically, uh, because the other two should be nested inside of test comment. And my code is only showing, I'm only asking my code to show the root level, like the, the, the ones that are directly tied to a feature. So if all goes well, we should only see um, test comment and test comment number four. But let's see what we actually see. Log in, uh, view the feature requests, feature request number one. So yeah, it doesn't seem like it's working properly because I see test comment two, three, and four here. Um, hmm. Why is that? I would have expected this to work. Uh, let me see. So what if I do this? What if I say uh, a div here with a th each, where I have you know comment level one, where we look at comments dot or comment dot comments. Oops. And here we have, I don't know, let's do some style, we'll add some left margin of 1M just to, you know, nest it in there so we can see that they're nested. Um, and then we can say, well, same thing as up here, right? We'll do, oh, we'll do a span like this, although we're now not looking at comment, we're looking at comment level one dot text. Okay. So basically, yeah. So you see what's happening? You see, this gives a much better visualization of the duplicate situation that we're looking at, right? So we see test comment that has two nested. We see test comment four, which is not nested, but then we also see a duplicate of test comment number two, number three again. So yeah, it's, why is that? Why are we are we hitting this situation? Um, I'm not. I thought this that would have done it, but I guess, I guess that only handles the the that only handles the uh, what's the word the Stack Overflow the circular references. I guess that's that's all that it does. So we might actually be forced into dealing with this from the front end. So let's look at the so this comments is from the feature controller. So when we look at a feature, we do a get mapping and we put the comments onto the model here. Well, we do a feature.get comments, right? Does that make any difference between that and the comment controller? Comment repo find by feature ID. I don't think it would make a difference. You know, six of one, half dozen of the other in terms of how we're, we're fetching the stuff, I believe. Um, hmm. So yeah, we're gonna have to have some sort of code in here to handle this situation. So I think at least we solved the 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 circular reference problem because I think we would have gotten a stack overflow exception with the code that I wrote. Uh, so yeah, I guess we're gonna have to handle this. I mean the the other so here's my other thought. The other way to handle it is on the front end we could say, you know. This we can have a th if here that says 
you know, comment dot what feature ID is not null, essentially, right? Oh, that's didn't like that. Comment, is it not feature ID? What's it called? Feature. If feature is not null, uh, didn't work. I guess it is not null. I guess, is feature, why would it not be null? Uh, oh, sorry, feature ID. Sorry, comment ID. If it, Sorry, comment. <laughs> oh, Trevor. That's all right. Uh, so, if the comments, comment dot comments, although I can't, I don't know if we can say not null, because that might still not work properly. Let's, let's just have, let's first see if that works. No, so it still has all of them. Um, so, what we want to do here is we want to use, I think it's lists dot is empty, is the, uh, helper method for time leaf to check and see if uh, well if the list isn't empty. Let's see if that works. No, what's the uh, might just be list. I can never remember. I need to Google this. Or is it lists lowercase? Lowercase lists. There we go. So okay, a little bit kind of closer, but kind of funky. So that's not the result I was expecting. Uh, is it backwards? Maybe it's backwards. Uh, Yes, yeah, sorry, not empty. I forgot the not. So if the lists, if the comments is not empty, then we should output it here. Is that right? Yeah, there you go. So that's, so that looks good, right? That's sort of what we were expecting, except I was also expecting to see test comment number four. Why? Right? Because test comment number four. What am I, what am I doing? comments no actually that's not that 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 logic isn't is not correct so let me take a minute and think before i code what am i trying to accomplish here right i'm trying to say get me show me for the first level comments the ones that um belong directly to the root which yeah is the ones that belong directly to the root of the feature do not have comment IDs. So this should be comment ID list. The comment ID value is null, right? But how do we reference comment ID? So how do we look at comment ID being null? Comment ID comes from comments, right? Doesn't it? Oh, it comes from comment, sorry. Comment is the one with comment ID. So what we want to look at is um, comment, which is, so comment dot comment, which is kind of weird, but that's the way it is. So if the comment dot comment, it's not a list, it's a single thing. So if it equals null, right? We want to show the ones that are root level. So that means that the comment equals null. So that might be, exactly. So there you go. This is perfect, albeit the order is off because if you keep refreshing, the order will change. But that's expected because this is it's a hash set or something. So I, I'm not maintaining order. We can fix that later. Uh, so this looks great. However, um, I think when we start getting to nested comments on nested comments, so if I try to insert one, then it's gonna it's gonna fail, I think. So if we try to insert into comment, right with a created date text comment id feature id user id values i don't know why i just didn't copy paste the previous one <laughs> let me copy paste the previous one i'm doing all this typing uh you know august i don't know 31st at 9 or 1502 whatever test comment number five so test comment number five should belong to a, a nested of a nested right so test comment two or three um, so let's use a, con a nested on number three, which is ID three. So the comment ID is the one it belongs to is here, right? Comment ID three is the parent. Feature ID is one and user ID is one. Cool. So we'll insert that bad boy. Now let's see what this looks like. So doesn't look right, does it?
definitely doesn't look right. So comment number five should belong to which one? Comment number five belongs to comment number three, which belongs to comment number one. So it should be nested inside of a nested inside of a nested. And the reason why we're seeing it like this is I, I don't have a third level nesting here. So this is where, you know, we're, we're going to have to solve that problem. That's a whole other problem that we need to solve as well is how are we going to solve the nesting of the nesting of the nesting? Right? Because here we can have comment level two is comment level one comments with a more style margin left where comment level two text, right? So then you see what's going on. So you see this structure is correct, right? We have test comment that has test comment two and test comment three and test comment five is a nested one of test comment three. So this is correct, except test comment five appears again and this is the duplicate situation. So although it looks visually like test comment five belongs to test comment four here, that's actually a, a bit of a misnomer. Um, it's, it's just getting extra, it's getting some extra left margin um, accidentally somehow. Um, so again, we're not solving the duplicate problem here. It looked like we solved it because we added this, but there's another solution. So there's two problems we need to solve. The first is we still need to figure out how to get rid of uh, the duplicates that are being sent back in our list. So we're gonna have to have a brainstorming session to do that. Um, and then the second problem is this nesting of a nested of a nested of a nested. We could just keep on writing this code over and over. So we need to think of a way to do this such that there's no limit to the number of nested comments we could have, right? There's gotta be a way to solve that problem, right? I, I don't believe that the solution is to just manually code it in and to have a hard coded uh, solu uh, situation here where we have to, there, there is a hard limit on the number of nested comments that we can leave, right? Maybe, maybe there is, maybe that is the way all the commenting systems in the world are designed, um, but yeah, I don't know. We're gonna have to have a brainstorming session about that one as well and see what we can come up with, okay? So those are two problems that we need to solve. We did some, you know, decent work here in terms of, you know, getting rid of some, some of the circular dependencies using the, um, whatchamacallit here, uh, JSON identity info, okay? Copy, paste, boom, it works beautifully, awesome. Uh, but yeah, we're still not done. We have two more problems to solve. So looking forward to seeing you in the next video where we're going to hopefully solve one of those two problems. Take care of yourself. Happy learning. Bye for now.